Naomi Seibt here, who uh, we've been following on, on Valken.se for, for a while. She's 19 years old from Germany, and she got into uh, climate research during uh, this year, uh, 2019, actually. And uh, you've been a, a lot in the media the last, last few weeks recently, at least in Sweden. So I wanted to start off, how do you get into this? Because it's not so many young people that really start to study climate change uh, critically. M most people just follow follow Greta Thunberg or get into some uh, uh, organization that's already there, you know, but you, you start it your own way. Why didn't you just follow the rest? Like it's, it's more common nowadays. Uh, well, it's very interesting that you say I'm in the Swedish media a lot because I, at this point, I don't even um, see uh, which media outlets cover uh, the topic of uh, Naomi Zeit, the anti Greta anymore. Um, it's been so much lately. Um, well, I I just started looking into this uh, at the beginning of 2019 um, purely um, out of a scientific interest um, in the climate change topic because I saw that Fridays for Future and Greta Thunberg um, was becoming more and more popular and I wanted to, for the first time, question my own views on climate change because before that I was taught at school, of course, uh, just the mainstream narrative of the climate is changing and not just that, the the atmosphere is heating up uh, at a catastrophic rate and we must do something to fight it. Right now we need to reduce our CO2 emissions and I, yeah, like I said, I didn't question it at all, but I always loved science uh, in middle school especially and so I, if I wanted to stay true to my principles of being a scientific skeptic and also of being a libertarian who fights for freedom of speech, I had to look, of, uh, look at both sides of the spectrum and question the topic. And do you, well, what were your main conclusion after you've been studying the topics for, uh, I guess you, you took you a few months to, what, what was your conclusion after you studied it yourself and not just follow the education system? Well, first of all, the um, the the amount of global warming that we're experiencing has been massively overstated. And then secondly, I do not see that humans are the main cause for climate change. Of course, CO2 is a greenhouse gas. And so that means in a lab experiment, CO2 will will cause some warming. But the problem is that um, it is such an insignificant amount that we emit in the atmosphere um, compared to, for example, the main greenhouse gas in the air, which is water vapor. And uh, it cannot have such a drastic impact on the temperature. As we can see when we look at real world data, um, the climate has not changed as much as the IPCC told us it would uh, back in 1990, uh, they made their predictions, they have failed. And so we cannot base our um, policies with regards to climate change on something that is merely a bubble of lies and propaganda and um, a very amplified effect of CO2 emissions. Um, that is not really true. Uh, it's just based on those climate models that the IPCC came up with at some point. Yeah, I had the same experience myself. I studied university like around 2003. Uh, I'm not an expert, but I had a course in uh, atmospheric chemistry. And I was surprised because the lecturer, he, he said that uh, the water vapor had a, had a much more significant effect. And that was the first time I heard about it. There was nothing, it was a long time ago now, but there was nothing in the media. And, and ever since, the, the only thing you talk about is uh, is carbon dioxide and, and sometimes maybe methane, but 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 there are other climate gases that are also significant. It's not it's not the only factor like you understand if you just read the regular media. Exactly, and carbon dioxide. What does that even mean? It's just it is a molecule, and it's not unnatural. It's not the demon, and it's uh, yeah, it's being so demonized as some kind of artificial. Um, chemistry product that we're uh, putting in the air to destroy the planet and that is just so ridiculous it's not scientific at all and um, CO2 emissions can actually lead to more more greening and uh, also the warming uh, has great benefits for us as humans we do not like the cold and uh, it is much better for us as humans to live in a warmer climate than a colder one so it is 
it is also quite ridiculous that we don't even question what even is the ideal temperature on Earth. And um, there might even be some very uh, great benefits from um, having some amount of global warming. One thing I don't hear people saying that much is that uh, you call it the greenhouse gas, and I don't know if that's a coincidence, but in greenhouses you usually have a higher level of carbon dioxide because the plants uh, grow bigger and, and they grow quicker. So uh, when you have a higher level of carbon dioxide in the, in the earth atmosphere, I assume that also also the plants would benefit from it. Absolutely, and CO2 fertilization leads to better crop yields. And so really this global warming and um, CO2, um, it helps us feed more people. It leads to, uh, of course, we know that we need fossil fuels for a more progressive society to make this earth cleaner and healthier and to uh, invent more amazing devices that can condense so much efficiency into small, um, small iPhones and uh, other devices. So we really need to appreciate what we've got and what we've been, the way we've benefited from uh, fossil fuels. And of course, we can look into alternative energy sources. And I don't say that we should um, stop doing our research on, for example, nuclear energy altogether. Of course not. Um, and there are ways to be environmentally friendly, even as a climate realist. We're not climate deniers. Um, we just want to take a more sensible approach when it comes to climate change and um, how to use energy efficiently. In, in the recent years, I feel a um, long time ago when I was interested in these topics in the beginning, like in early 2000s, it, it was more of a scientific debate, uh, even if it was skewed to the people who believe that carbon dioxide creates this catastrophic warming. But, but the last few years, it, it feels like it's shifted into just politics and propaganda that you want to put hundreds of billions of uh, dollars into these climate funds and carbon credits. Uh, and it, there's no there's no science debate. Uh, there is just, uh, I don't know if you call Greta Thunberg a, a cult movement, but it's just, uh, there's no discussion because if you say anything that they don't agree on, uh, they just refer to uh, that all the climate scientists agree with us and, and you're a denier. So how, how do you think the climate is, both, both in politics and, and, and the debate, it, it's, uh, it there's, there's no focus on science anymore. It's just uh, money and politics and propaganda, I feel. So uh, it's hard. How do you approach that? Exactly. Everybody who talks about climate change um, on the other side talks about it as if they know what they are talking about and as if it's a scientific topic. But at this point, that's just not the case. They speak in very loose terms like climate denier, climate justice. Um, we need to save the climate. How can you save the climate? Do you even know what that means? Do you know what climate even, um, what the definition of climate really is? And then there's so much cherry picking as well. For example, when there's a drought or uh, some other kind of catastrophe, a wildfire, uh, then people point to it immediately and say, ah, that's global warming or that's climate change and it's caused by humans. No, of course, well, of course, it's climate change. Uh, it's a change in the climate, it's a change in, in nature, but it's just a natural phenomenon. And so we need to be more realistic about this and um, not, not believe that all of the sudden um, nature is not doing its own thing anymore and that we are causing everything that goes in nature. We are vastly overestimating our own power on this planet when it comes to how much of an effect we have on nature. I, I picked some of the, of the um, Swedish articles about you. Um, it, it's uh, mostly mainstream articles they are found under some small alternatives that, that is not so biased, but uh, not to go through everything, but in one of articles they call you uh, anti-Greta and uh, climate denier. Uh, and one of the things they mention in the article that that you don't have science on your side because 97% of all peer review studies agree on a global warming uh, caused by humans. So, I mean, they always bring up this 97% uh, number that, that this both young cook got. And I think also someone else got uh, also 97%, but in another way. I mean, what, what kind of proof is that 97% argument that the mainstream media, at least in Sweden, they, they bring it up in every second article? First of all, consensus is no proof at all. 
that's not science that's not how it works just because people agree on something that doesn't mean it's true just one scientist has to be right about something and that means that it's fact so we don't determine what's right and what's wrong um but those studies this john cook study is completely misconstrued and um it did not occur in the way that the media is presenting it because um out of those 12,000 people papers that were reviewed in the study only 30 percent of the scientists um, that were asked in the survey actually expressed any opinion on climate change. And in total, only 0.3%, so very tiny amount, um, explicitly stated that humans are the main driver for climate change. So this 97% consensus is just ridiculous because what most people, the question that most people ask, or what they say is 97% of scientists agree that climate change is real. And yes, climate change is real. The cl climate has always changed and it will continue to do so in the future. We need to be more precise in our question and ask, is, um, are, are humans the main driver for climate change? And is it actually that catastrophic? Yeah. Um... That's that's a great point because uh, I mean there, there is always some climate change. So it's a little bit be, be, a long time ago uh, they they also called it global warming, but then it was not good enough exactly. because it wasn't warming so much. So yeah. then they, re, they relabel it to climate change, more like a marketing trick or something. Mm -hmm. um, and the IPCC still uses the same climate models, completely outdated. Yeah. You, you brought up some things already, but, but, but what is a good thing to, uh, if you want to ask this uh, so-called climate alarmist a question? I mean, if if they would answer, most mostly they don't want to take the debate, but what is a few good question to uh, to ask a climate alarmist that they might be uh, uncomfortable answering? Because because they, they seem very sure about their points, but, but is there any way that you can question them? I have tried and of course you can you can be a smart ass and you can ask them the science questions like for example uh, what effect does CO2 even have on uh, the atmosphere um, what about other factors like uh, the impact that the sun has on the climate the impact that uh, water feedback responses have on uh, the um, the uh, warming effect that you get from CO2 emissions all of that but they will not be able to follow your points and then they will just reply well I just I just repeat what all those scientists say and so they will argue with the scientific consensus so um i would point out that the scientific consensus is wrong and then i would just tell them please continue doing your own research look into this a little more thoroughly then come back to me and don't be an activist before you know what you're talking about one thing about doing your own research is uh, to be able to find any, any good information uh, nowadays because most people don't don't go and, and get their own studies maybe i mean that that's a good thing but most people might get interested in learning about the topic if they see you on a video or they read some uh, non-biased article but but i noticed uh, even posting like an article on facebook about this can get you banned uh, from the platform mm -hmm. because they have a fact checker that like uh, deems you you're wrong or uh, and you can get different suspensions and penalties and it depends on if you're a facebook page or a person or uh, and uh, and uh, in Swedish media, they, they wanted YouTube to um, to stop uh, yeah videos about uh, uh, yeah they call them climate deniers. Uh, I'm, I'm they, facing they, the same problem right now. Yeah, yes, uh, uh, and um, so so what got got me interested in this climate uh, change uh, discussion uh, is the censorship because it, it's uh, they're using it as a tool to censor people. So if you have a it's, it's also a freedom of speech uh, question now because you, you, you know, it doesn't seem like you're allowed to talk about this on, on the big platforms anymore. Uh, what is your experience about that? Yes, uh, that is absolutely true. And it is a purely political topic at this point. We, on our side, we must be aware of the science and we must do our research thoroughly so that we can argue scientifically because we need to bring science back into the, into the discussion. But out in the open, in the mainstream, there is no science at all and that's just people um quoting this um this consensus uh, thing and um we need to bring back the science by uh finding out about it ourselves uh by um promoting scientists who are actually 
spreading good and useful information who have done their research, who are continuing to do their research, despite the backlash that they get, even though they might lose their jobs. And yeah, that's all we can do. We need to stay strong and face the backlash. And of course, the media will try to slander us and they will try to ban us. But uh, we always have to try and be ahead of them, uh, at least one or two or maybe three steps. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been working on, on a small alternative media site. I, it's, maybe it's kind of big for being in Sweden, but but we always notice this kind of censorship and tactics is always keep changing. It's you have to adapt to whatever they're up to at the moment. Um, one, one thing uh, I don't know if you mentioned it, but but uh, it seems the value of a human life is also when they have this climate uh, alarmist. Uh, it, it doesn't seem mm -hmm. like human life is so important. I even saw some extreme articles uh, the last few days that uh, we have the coronavirus outbreak that's in most of the thing to talk about the media now. And they were saying that because of this coronavirus outbreak, we have uh, less CO2 emissions, like it was a good thing uh, because the factories yeah. are shutting down. And, and also some uh, people on social media have seen they're, they're saying uh, they're thankful for the virus because we will have less humans on Earth and it's good for the environment. I, how do you think this kind of uh, opinions, uh, where does it come from? It's like it's like some kind of anti-humanist movement mi mixed into all of this. Yeah, precisely. And it also ties in with the, with the abortion debate. That, um, uh, we continue to um, to tell females um, that they are that they shouldn't get children. Um, they shouldn't have children so that they can work their jobs so they can have a more successful life, which is just ridiculous because you can have a very successful life as a mother. Um, success is not determined by money or fame or um, anything like that. So um, this entire very anti-humanist narrative is really the saddest part about all, all of this. And um, we are not parasites on the planet. And it should be our main concern that we um, make a good future for us possible. And Greta Thunberg may say, uh, you have stolen my childhood and you are stealing my future. But no, she is ruining her own childhood and, and um, climate alarmists are ruining the future because we are being pushed into a more totalitarian society um, by restricting freedom, freedom of speech, by claiming that we are parasites on the planet and that we are destroying the earth yeah it's tragic it really is and that's why we have to fight i, I thought as a last point we already got a little bit into it but what's your advice to to a younger person or even a little bit older like who wants to be a climate realist because you uh, I think people are afraid to be left out of a group, and and even if you have a job, it's usually it's uh, it's almost like company policy to uh, to believe in this climate change thing. Otherwise, you're you don't fit in even in a company. And the same in education. How how do you how do you become a climate realist, and how do you handle uh, the surrounding uh, ganging up in you? Or what what's your experience? How how do, can you make it a positive thing? Be stubborn and just push through all the backlash and you will be rewarded with true and very good friends in the end. That is my recommendation. Continue doing your research. Um, listen to people from both sides. Don't uh, try to shut anyone down, uh, whether from the left or the right. Listen to every argument. Always stay humble and um, be a scientific skeptic. Yeah. Okay, okay, I think that's it. Thank you, thank you a lot for the interview. And, and um, I think you're reaching more and more people uh, every day. It seems to thank be a, a growing interest. I try. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Have a good day.